the 87th edition of WrestleRant with, of course, your host, Bleacher Report, Bleacher Comics Level 3, Graham Jason Matthews, here to review tonight's Electric Hell in a Cell pay-per-view occurring in Atlanta, Georgia. Now, the crowd wasn't all that hot throughout the entire night. Rather, they were rather dead, but I'll get to that later on as the show progresses. To kick off the show, we had the pre-show involving John Cena, that aired on YouTube and both WWE.com, respectively. I um, saw him get interviewed by Josh Matthews, I want to say, I believe. Uh, no, I'm sorry, Michael Cole, taking questions via Tout and Twitter from, um, from Twitter followers and from the WWE Universe. Now, this is okay for what it was. The questions were pretty basic. John Cena's answers was, was basically what you'd expect from him to say. Nothing all that exciting or noteworthy. Um, it's a pre-show, so really nothing all that monumental would happen anyway. Please excuse Antonio Cesaro's United States Championship victory from Hell in a Cell. Sorry, from SummerSlam two months ago. But that aside, this was um, you know basically what you'd expect. Vicky Guerrero comes out, I believe. And uh, and Dolph Ziggler comes out, or Vicky Guerrero interrupts John Cena. Dolph Ziggler attempts to attack John Cena. Um, doesn't get very far. Cena gets the better of Dolph Ziggler, and that was the end of that. Thought it would be teasing a match for later in the night. We did not end up getting that. That was the last time that we saw John Cena the entire night. So I was extremely happy about that. So this would, this would technically make this, if you don't count the pre-show, which isn't the actual pay-per-view, this will be the first pay-per-view, or this would be the first pay-per-view since last year's TLC event last December, without John Cena on the actual card. So I'm really happy to see that. Um, it's going to be interesting to, how the buy, to see how the buy rate does as compared to last year and years, in, in years past. But even still, it was a nice refreshing change to not get John Cena in the show. Even if it was a simple interview, we did not see that. Rather, we just saw John Cena in the pre-show. So up next, our first official match tonight, Randy Orton defeating Del Rio um, in a very, very good matchup. As I said before, I've enjoyed this feud. I've been liking where it's been going. It, it, the winner of this match wasn't really all that relevant. Um, I'm not talking about Randy Orton specifically, but I mean, whoever won, it didn't really matter all that much. I know we're going to see the feud continue regardless. Going into Survivor Series, presumably in a tag team match, as we've seen in years past. <clears throat> but even still, it's a really good match to kick off the show. They have a lot of good chemistry. Love the finish with Del Rio going for that kick in the corner, only to re be reversed in the RKO from Orton. It's a really good match to kick off the show. Up next, we had... The I'm sorry, I'm looking at the lineup here. A bit confused. We had the I believe the tag team champion. Yeah, we had the WWE tag team championship match up next with Team Hell No taking on Road Scholars. Road Scholars ended up winning the match via disqualification, which I thought was a weak finish for an otherwise good match. Um, again, the crowd pretty much killed it. The Georgia crowd, I don't want to say was complete shit, but they were. I, I hate to say it, but they were complete shit for the first half of the show. Kind of into the second half, but more so for the first half of the show. Um, I can't blame them all that much. I mean, some of these matches weren't all that exciting, but even still, this was a really good match that they should have reacted more towards. Road Scholars, very good worker, same thing with Hell No. Kept the com uh, you know, the comedy antics down to a minimum, which was good. It was kind of overdone by this point anyway, so I was glad they just kept straight wrestling. But it was a weak finish with the um, with Road Scholars getting beat down in the corner by Kane. Presumably this feud continues with the finish, so I'm glad to see that. Road Scholars will eventually become WWE Tag Team Champions, but the finish was pretty lackluster. I mean, it didn't really kill the crowd reaction because they weren't reacting in the first place. But even still, I'm glad to see this uh, feud continuing past this point. Up next, Miz versus Kofi Kingston for the Intercontinental Championship. Yet another great match that was pretty much killed by the dead crowd. Kofi Kingston goes over here. No real shocker. These guys had a pretty good matchup. Not as good as their main event matchup. But even still, it was a really good matchup. Miz made, was made to look good. Same thing with Kofi Kingston. Really not much as you could say here. Hopefully the feud ends here and Kofi Kingston can go on to more challengers. Um, maybe uh, Kurt Hawkins who can come back from injury. Maybe Wade Barrett, Dolph Ziggler, Cody Rhodes, Damian Sandow, whoever it may be. Kofi Kingston has a lot of potential challengers as an Intercontinental Champion. So I'm looking forward to the rest of his singles push as IC Champion. Where Miz goes from here, I have absolutely no idea. This guy's been put, been Pushed zero, I mean, not, I'm sorry, let me rephrase that. Miz hasn't been pushed at all since he came back, or at least since he won the IC Championship. He's lost almost every match that he's been in. He's been treated like complete shit since he came back this past July, or more so the past year and a half. I mean, since this guy broke up with R-Truth, the guy's been losing almost every single match that he's been involved in. So that aside, I mean, hopefully he does have great potential. Hopefully he gets put in the main event where he belongs in the very near future. Maybe not on Raw with Punk still WWE Champion, maybe on SmackDown when shows world champion or maybe turn of face perhaps we're just gonna have to wait and see so up next we had justin gabriel versus antonio cesar for the united states championship in an impromptu unadvertised matchup again a fun slash good match that was killed by the crowd reaction they didn't give a shit about this match can't really blame them obviously because it wasn't advertised and antonio cesar isn't over neither is justin gabriel 
Um, but even still, I like this matchup. It was a good filler matchup. Justin Gabriel, as much as they don't like his new haircut, did pretty good. Did pretty good against this matchup. In this matchup against Antonio Cesaro, I should say. Um, Cesaro needs more heat to get over as United States champion. I like him as United States champion. He makes he's good. He's fitting for the championship. On the firmos, I know it's basic. It's simple heel heat. It's it's effective though. What he's doing, and I'm liking what he's doing. He has a lot of potential as U.S. champion. I'm liking this feud between him and Gabriel. Hopefully, it continues from this point forward. So up next, we had Rey Mysterio and Sin Cara defeating the, dan the tandem of the primetime players, Darren Young and Tedis O'Neill, in another unadvertised matchup. This was what really broke up, woke up the Atlanta-Georgia uh, crowd. This is a really, really good match. As I suspected, we saw this match a couple weeks ago on Raw, which is equally good match. Same thing here tonight. Rey Mysterio and Sin Cara selling good for primetime players. Primetime players look strong at defeat. So a very enjoyable tag team match. And um, Rey Mysterio and Sin Cara pick up the victory here. Sin Cara had a scary spot when he hurt his neck when he was went for a reversal of a power slam or something like that on, on Titus O'Neil. I did not notice that at first, but they kind of sold the effects following the matchup, so I'm glad to hear that in, uh, Sin Cara is indeed okay. So up next for the World's Heavyweight Championship, Big Show contending for the world title against Sheamus. Of course, as I said in my prediction video, I said this on Bleach Report, my, art, my numerous articles, I said this time and time again on Tavis GSM and Spoilers, respectively. This match would have been shit. That's what I was predicting. However, this match was probably the match of the night. This was a fucking good match. Sheamus looked good here. Big Show looked good here. I love the commentary from JBL, Jim Ross, and Michael Cole saying that no one has ever kicked out from the WMD before Sheamus. That was really sold effectively. As you can hear from the crowd reaction, this they were pretty loud for this match as well. Um, Show kicked out of the bro kick, which I found shocking as well. Show ended up knocking out Sheamus after reversing the bro kick for a second time and thus becoming the new World Heavyweight Champion. And no, not for 45 seconds. It lasted longer than 45 seconds because um, Dolph Ziggler did not cash in his Money in the Brain briefcase, which was a bit surprising um, after all the you know all, after all the hype that he's been putting into it for the last couple of weeks. Maybe he's going to explain himself tomorrow night on Raw. But even still, I was surprised not to see him. I know I, I from what I read, I didn't catch his part, but he was watching the show on a monitor from the back. So I guess I at least acknowledged it. But even still... A big win for Big Show. As much as I hate Big Show, I was actually marking out for his title victory. Sheamus has been champion since WrestleMania 28. This is a big win for Big Show. He didn't win in fluky fashion. He won clean. He won clean. He defeated Sheamus. I can honestly not remember the last time Sheamus won a match clean. It's been quite a while since that happened, so I was really, really glad to see that match happen here, or the finish happen here with Big Show, your new World Heavyweight Champion. With that being said, I expect the finish or the feud to go on until Survivor Series. Maybe that's when Big Show, I'm sorry, Dolph Ziggler cashes in the Money in the Bank briefcase. We're just going to have to wait and see, but overall, a very, very good match. Um, up next, a Divas Championship match with Eve successfully retaining her Divas title against both Caitlyn and Layla. Pretty good matchup for, uh, as far as Divas standards goes. Eve and Layla, pretty good workers. Caitlyn, not so much, but Eve and Layla took Caitlyn, or, um, you know, Brought Caitlyn to a good matchup here. Um, Caitlyn did pretty well for herself, especially with the power slam coming off of the beast with the power moves. There's the numerous power maneuvers. Even still, it was a pretty good match as far as Diva standards goes. Can't really say much more, uh, much more about this matchup. Um, with Eve retaining, hopefully she does continue to hold the championship going forward. To no tomorrow, October 29th, marks her five-year anniversary in WWE as um, a WWE Diva after winning the Diva Search on that day five years back. So I'm glad to see that. And they're, you know, kind of going full circle with Eve as the Divas champion. But um, even still, I believe this would lead into an Eve versus Caitlyn feud since Eve pinned Layla, I think. Um, was, I think I think that was the case. So Eve's going to go against Caitlyn for the Divas championship going forward after all the, you know, the iPad shoot that we've seen in recent weeks. So um, I'm looking forward to that feud over the Divas championship. A lot of people are complaining about this. I mean, it was a fine match. These guys are good workers. At least they're finally being given something to do, which I'm always appreciating the effort from the WWE creative that they're putting into um, the WWE Divas division as of late. So up next, our main event, WWE Championship, Hell in a Cell match between CM Punk and Ryback. A very solid matchup. Pretty much what I saw at my live event that I attended last Sunday night. So this was a pretty good matchup. Ryback looked good. CM Punk looked good. It was a bit brief. Um, I guess they were short on time a little bit after the, all the filler matches that they had to fill the card earlier in the night. They only had about 20 minutes, uh, 20 to 35 minutes, I think. or tw I'm sorry, 20 to 25 minutes. Um, they cut out from the broadcast about 5, 10 minutes early, I would say. But um, even still, CM Punk re successfully retained the WWE Championship here as Ryback was going for a shell shock finisher. The ref, surprisingly, um, Ryback... 
Brad Maddox, I believe you pronounce it. I completely botch names all the time, so this comes as no surprise if I botch this wrong. If I say this wrong, I'm sorry. But um, he, he stops Ryback mid-move, gives him a low blow. CM Punk pins Ryback, successfully retains the WWE Championship. Is Ryback streak over? Technically, yes. Could they expunge his loss? Of course, but that wasn't the end of it. Um, CM Punk tried to escape. The referee tried to escape. So Ryback destroys the referee, clotheslines him into hell, much like JBL, a little reference there since he was on commentary, picks the referee up and throws him into the side of the cage. It was fucking awesome, a very cool finish for the um, to the referee, but that wasn't the, that wasn't it either. Um, he goes over, he picks up Punk, Paul Heyman runs off, destroys Punk, Punk climbs to the top of the cage, as does Ryback, which is surprising. He looked like Spider-Man in that red attire that I really, really like. Um, CM Punk trying to escape, Ryan Ryback picks him up, and hits a shell shock on top of the cell. So that was a really, really cool spot, really, really cool sight with Ryback going over, ending the show saying, feed me more on the top of the cell. So a really epic ending to a decent to pretty good show. Um, so again, let me address the WWE Championship match first. A lot of people are shitting on this. People are tweeting me saying that they did not like this matchup, they didn't like the finish. Hear me out. Now, this is coming from the biggest Ryback mark out there. As I've said numerous times in the past, I've loved this guy since his NXT days back in early 2010. So you know how much I wanted this guy to be WWE Champion. Maybe not tonight, maybe at some point. CM Punk needs to be WWE Champion going to the Royal Rumble in January. His streak cannot end. He needs to be a 15-month, I'm sorry, 14-month reigning WWE Champion going into his match with The Rock. That's what's going to make it meaningful. So Ryback, yeah, sure he loses, maybe he loses momentum. Possibly. But they could always expunge the loss. That's what not, that's what people aren't understanding from what I'm saying. They could always expunge the loss because he lost in such screwy fashion. They couldn't have had Brock Lesnar come back. They could not have had Cena come back. They, I mean, a lot of people are saying, why didn't this go to a no contest? I hear you. I wanted this to go to a no contest too. But they couldn't do that. They needed to send the crowd home happy. If that happened, then who gives a shit? People would have been like, oh, this is a boring-ass pay-per-view. They needed to end this on a high note. The crowd was not hot for the rest of the pay-per-view up until the tag team match with Rey Mysterio and Finn Carter and the front-time players. The rest of the pay-per-view before that was good, a lot of good action, but the crowd was fucking dead for it, so they needed to end that on a hot note. I love Ryback. He will be WWE Champion at some point, just to not tonight. And so ending the show with him getting this major momentum, and that's such a big way... It was huge. I mean, this guy, it, it puts Ryback over in a big way. The crowd was fucking hot for Ryback at the end of the show. So I was really, really happy about that. The feud can continue. CM Punk's reign needs to continue. I would have rather had, even if CM Punk won clean, CM Punk's reign needs to continue. It's more important than Ryback's streak. Who cares if it was a screwy finish? It, saved, it protects Ryback. It protects CM Punk. Everyone wins. The crowd was happy. I thought it was a really cool spot. So overall, I thought this was a pretty good show. A lot of people weren't agreeing with me. Mostly due to the crowd reaction, I understand that. The wrestling aspect of the show, I enjoyed it. There were Almost every match in the show was very well wrestled. I really enjoyed it. The crowd reaction, sure, it took a bit out of the excitement for me and probably many other fans. But uh, that aside, this was a really good show that had a lot of really good results. I went 7-1 and one in my predictions. I know it was a bit predictable. I know I said this would have been an unpredictable show. But even still, this is a really good good show that I really enjoyed. Maybe not as good as Night of Champions. I understand that. But it was still a really good show that I enjoyed with a lot of excitement going forward on Raw as to what happens to the big show as world champion. What happens with Ryback and a streak? Is CM Punk is there going to be any repercussions for this? What happens to the referee? There's a lot of questions going to Raw, which I enjoy. So overall, as I just said, I really enjoyed this pay-per-view. It, it wasn't a great pay-per-view. I stressed that on Twitter that it was a great pay-per-view. I'd say it was pretty good. Overall, I enjoyed it. I liked the action. I liked where this stuff is going. I liked the storytelling throughout the night. Good moments included Big Show winning the world title. Surprisingly enough, that was one of my favorite moments of the show. And Ryback and the Punk thing at the end. I liked that. All the other matches, a bit forgettable, but a good action that was kind of killed by the uh, dead crap. So, that aside, I hope you guys subscribe. Hope you enjoyed the show as well. Make sure to check out my reviews on Next Era Wrestling. Make sure to follow me on Twitter at Sam underscore on score GSM with your thoughts on the show. And uh, make sure to read my review on Bleacher Report coming up soon. So, thanks guys for watching. I really do appreciate it. And this is GSM signing out. Till next time, guys.